Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Cole Woodcox, Executive Director for the Council of Public Global Arts Colleges. Thank you so much for attending and for presenting at the 2020 annual meeting, Partner to Prosper. It's been fantastic to see old friends, hello, old friends, um, and likewise to meet new people. And thanks especially to those attending from Louisiana State University, Alexandria, from Kentucky State University, um, and from Northern State University. These three universities are at various stages of moving toward becoming full members of COPAC. We are so glad that you are here. You create, all of you, a very, very energizing community, both virtually and in person. You've contributed an impressive set of presentations and poster presentations, and it has been impressive to learn about what you do and how you do it, especially during uncertain times and during a very dynamic year, both past, present, and also its future. We encourage you to stay connected. And we encourage you to share your ideas and connect your ideas, to connect your resources, and to connect your voices as you advocate for the public liberal arts. In addition to thanking you, I'd also like to thank Claire here at COPLAC General Office for her work on the annual meeting and thank King State College. Many of you may not know it, but our original host for this annual meeting had to step back last autumn and King volunteered promptly to step in, become the host and craft this wonderful theme of Partner to Prosper and invited an inspiring speaker. Not only was that very generous on King's part, but during the past four months, King has been extremely creative in moving an all-person event or an all-in-person event then to a successful, meaning virtual event that has connected all of us and partnered with local philanthropies. Thank you so much to Mark and Misty for all your work preparing for these two days and for moderating sessions, so applause. <clears throat> And thanks also to the team at Keen, to Okal and to Sue, to Kim and the other Kim, and Veronica and Gordon. Thank you very much for your work. Thanks also to Melinda. Between March and June, COPLAC hosted nine Zoom meetings for chief executive officers and for chief academic officers to share how they were working with the pandemic. They shared policies and protocols and messages, and they partnered. As we were preparing to end one of the very, very first meetings, Melinda shared her energizing vision of the liberal arts with us. They are vital at this moment. Our hope at this time is to understand a pandemic, to strengthen a democracy, to advocate for social justice, to be anti-racist, not by looking at one discipline, but by digging deep into multiple disciplines. The liberal arts are partnerships. Thank you again, Team Keen and Melinda, for that message and for demonstrating how the liberal arts partner to prosper and partner with communities. Thank you again. Thank you, Cole. And um, genuinely, this is a privilege to be a part of this community. I was saying in the last session that the, the COPLEC community is a very fierce and mighty group, and we matter now more than ever with regard to helping our communities withstand a pandemic, economic disruption, unrest, as we heard from Dr. Grant earlier today. And so I was privileged to be a part of this community as a faculty member and as a young administrator. And I'm privileged to be a part of this community now as the president at Keene State. So I was thrilled that we could host this event. And I am so very proud of all of the Team Keene members who've made this possible. And my thanks again to Claire and Cole for the work that you've done with us to help bring this forward. The beauty of this um, event is always the closeness of community that you feel when you're on um, one another's campus. So I wish you were here with me. I wish we could be hugging each other, um, which we can't do either of those things. So we can't be in community together. And as an extrovert, it's the greatest loss for me right now is that we can't be in three dimensions with each other and playing trivia to take home incredible goodies from all the campuses. As Mary alluded to this morning, this is a, a, a major tradition for COPLAC. We will get this back, um, but in the meantime, I'm inspired for the presentations that I've heard over the last several hours, the way that our campuses are leaning in, the work that all of you and your colleagues are doing. I'm confident that the public liberal arts colleges are essential for the future of higher ed. Um, and for our democracy. And I'm excited to be a part of this community with all of you. So thank you for coming. 
to the, the event here that Keene State has been able to host. And it's been an absolute privilege to see old friends and new friends and to everyone at Keene State, thank you for doing us so proud in the work you've done these past days. Um, and I can't wait to see all of you at a future board meeting, at a future um, research symposium, or a future intensive, or at another annual meeting. So until then, please be well and know that the Keene team is here and we're excited to be a part of this community with all of you. And we are ready for what comes next. So thank you all so much. Here we go. Okay. The first question, what is the name of the New Hampshire town that the fictional West Wing president was named after? Keene, Swansea, Bartlett, or Derry? Okay, right. so it has a timer, I should have said that. Let me turn a little bit of volume on so you can hear. And the correct answer is Bartlett and nine people, Jeb Bartlett, for those of you who don't know, I'm currently re-watching The West Wing just because I have to occasionally just to make myself feel good. So that's where this question came from. And what will happen now is depending on how quickly you responded, it assigns points to you. So our leaderboard, MB is the leader right now followed by Timma, KMO, I think that's Mark Gempler, and then Claire. All right, ready? This iconic New Hampshire geological structure fell on May 3rd, 2003. What is it called? Looks like most folks got it is the old man of the mountain. My daughter thought it was stone face. So I think I have to do new, some New Hampshire history with her. And oh, MB, still rocking it. Way to go. Okay, ready? Out of the 13 original colonies from first to last, when did New Hampshire declare its independence from Great Britain? Was it first, third, ninth, or thirteenth? First is correct. We led the way. Oh, MB. Way to go, Scott. Ready? What is the nickname for New Hampshire? Are we the Ocean State, the Pine Tree State, the Bay State, or the Granite State? We are indeed the Granite State. Nicely done. All right. Oh, Scott, you were on fire there. Denise, way to go. All I right. am a geologist who studies granites. There you go. All right. Question five. Mount Washington holds this world record. Is it the most snowfall in a single season, the most auto traveled auto road, the highest wind speed, or the oldest cur curated trails? You are correct. The highest wind speed, I believe it was 160 miles per hour or something crazy like that. Um, it actually bent over the, the wind tower. Okay, here we go. Oh, Mark. Mark Gempler's climbing there. Denise, and, and so was this a geological one again, Denise? I'm actually going to be visiting, if my state allows, in about two weeks. So I've been reading up on your part of the world. 
Make sure you bring some like rocks in your shoes so you don't get blown away. Okay. Question six. What famous play is set in the Monadnock region? Is it Little Women, Our Town, On Golden Pond, or The Scarlet Letter? So it is Our Town. And um, I happen to be in this play in high school as a stage manager and can still recite any of it. If you'd like me to do that, just, you know, let me know. I'd be happy to help out. Um, it, it actually is, I think Peterborough is the town, which is one over that it is set in. Okay. Oh, Mark. Ah, because we had some kids of ours in this play recently, didn't we? Yes. Okay. So this is question seven. You're going to um, get a question and then you're gonna have to drag your responses in order, okay? So, from least to most, place the following New England states in order for miles of seacoast. And you have a minute for this one, so it's a little bit longer timeline. All right, 82% got it right. New Hampshire has a whole 13 miles of seacoast, followed by Rhode Island, the smallest state, Connecticut, and then Maine. Ooh, moving up. Okay, what city is the capital of New Hampshire? Is it Concord, Nashua, Manchester, or Keene? It is Concord. Mark. You didn't know what the capital was? Oh, you just were later. You were slower. That's what it was. I got it. Okay. Ready. Here we go. Question nine. What U.S. president was born in Hillsborough, New Hampshire? Rutherford B. Hayes, Grover Cleveland, Millard Fillmore, or Franklin Pierce? It is Franklin Pierce. The institution just south of us is named after him. Oh, and Gempler jumps back in the lead. It's close there. Okay. This mountain, the second most climbed mountain in the world, can be found about 20 miles from Keene. Denise is on this one. She was fast. She got all thousand points, I bet. It is Mount Monadnock, second most climbed mountain, Mount Fiji in, uh, is the uh, most climbed. Emma, my daughter was impressed that I did this Jeopardy style. Just, I don't know why, but all right. Oh boy. Mark, that's kind of a lead there. You were right on that one. Politics are part of the DNA of New Hampshire because of this event.
It is the first in the first in the nation presidential primary. Um, it was quite a scene here that day. Mark Gempler and I were driving vans to the polls all day long. It was quite spectacular. All right. What is the name of the New Hampshire school teacher who died in the explosion of the Space Shuttle Challenger? Jessica Meir, Sally Ride, Stephanie Wilson, or Krista McCulloch? It is Krista McCulloch. Um, we have a wonderful science museum up uh, by Concord, named after her. Okay. I like this little fire icon. Oh, look, Mark, I could kick you out of the game. Uh, this one is going to be another put them in order. Place these states in order from first to last of ratification of the Constitution. And again, you have a minute on this one. That music just got scary. Isn't that the Jaws theme? Delaware, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, and Rhode Island. Oh, I don't think anyone got that. Is that right? That means no one got this one correct. Um, New Hampshire was actually ninth, and it was the deciding vote. So once New Hampshire voted, it was a done deal. So everybody after that didn't matter. No, I, that's not. Oh, no change in the leaderboard. Okay. The original version of this movie was filmed in Keene, New Hampshire. Goodwill Hunting, Mrs. Doubtfire, Dead Poets Society, or Jumanji. It is Jumanji. We have um, still some murals from that. And uh, for a while, there was even a fake statue at the center of town of it. All right, we'll get it. We have, what, five questions left now? Time to get serious. Question 15. This famous documentary filmmaker lives and has based his production company, Florentine Films, in Walpole, New Hampshire. Correct, Ken Burns. It's about, um, I don't know, 10 miles from us and we have a number of our students who do internships with him. Whoa. All right, question 16. New Hampshire is one of two states, the other is Alaska with this tax status. No income tax, no property or income, no income or sales tax, no sales tax or property tax. No income or sales tax, which is why we're 50th in the nation for public support for higher education funding, right? All right. Oh, Mark got all the points on that one, I think. Question, how many state parks are there in New Hampshire? 10, 24, 36, or 42? It 
It is 42. Could you see the little map of all the bubbles? Pretty impressive. And Emma said, well, you just go for the higher and the low on those kind of things. I think there's been too many of those bubble sheet uh, 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 assessments. All right, question 18. This infamous movie about college life was set at Dartmouth College in Hanover, New Hampshire. Legally Blonde, Animal House, Old School, or Revenge of the Nerds? Is Animal House, and my understanding is that some folks might want to dispute that, but I'm pretty sure that it was Dartmouth. And of course, President Treadwell went there as well. So I think it was filmed after she went there. No, no. Okay. MB, you're the only one who can catch Mark at this point, maybe. All right. 19, how many states does New Hampshire border? And the state of confusion doesn't count. One, three, five, or six. Three is correct. So this is where I got concerned because Emma thought we might border Connecticut too. I don't know what to do with that. But anyways, all right, let's see where we're at. Oh, it looks like Mark's gonna take this. Ready, last question. This famous author of O Pioneers and My Antonia may have written about frontier life, but she's buried in Jaffrey, New Hampshire. Celia got this one first. Celia. It is Willa Cather. She is buried at the Jeffrey Meeting House um, Cemetery. So ready, now I think we get like some loud celebration thing that happens. Ha, 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 ha. 